Mark Briscoe will be appearing on tonight's episode of AEW Dynamite on TBS and what would have been his brother Jay Briscoe's 39th birthday. We've got an update on Warner Bros. Discovery changing their policy regarding the Briscoes after the tragic passing of Jay Briscoe last week. Brian Cage, how much longer does he have under AEW contract? Not that long, according to new reports. We've got the ratings for last week's edition of AEW Rampage on TNT. Sting drops another retirement hint after his recent match with Pro Wrestling Noah in Japan. An update on Universal Studios and dark with the latest taping set to take place this coming weekend also an update on AEW being praised by warner bros discovery executives for their ratings in addition to comments on the recent power slam series that's debuted on tbs uh, an update on AEW rescheduling their winnipeg debut for later this year and can just comment on the elite using their wayward son theme <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to Rest News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. Apologies for being missing the last couple of days. Life uh, tends to get in the way of these kind of things, but I'm back now delivering what you love. That is a lot of pro wrestling news, and there's plenty to get into in the world of All Elite Wrestling. Beginning with some real positive news and a really tragic situation, of course, that's the recent passing of Jay Briscoe and the infuriating policy that Warner Bros. Discovery, their mandate regarding the Briscoe brothers that prevented them from ever appearing on AEW programming, airing, uh, ever appearing on TBS, ever appearing on TNT. Well, in the wake of Jay Briscoe's tragic passing, it looks like that policy has now been changed. Unfortunately, it's a little bit too late, but one thing's for certain. We will see Mark Briscoe appear tonight on Dynamite on TBS on what would have been his brother's 39th birthday to memorialize his brother. Now, of course, it's been a week since the wrestling world tragically lost Jay Briscoe, Jammin' Pew, on January 17. Since Jay's passing, it has been reported that AEW were unable to host a tribute show, a celebration of life for Briscoe due to being prevented to do it by doing so by Warner Bros. Discovery. Now, what's quite interesting about this story is earlier yesterday, Dave Meltzer said that AEW would still not be able to feature Mark Briscoe on the show, but that turned out not to be the case later on in the day. Tony Khan, AEW president, chief of creative, CEO, etc., took to Twitter to announce that on tonight's edition of Dynamite, which would have fallen on what would have been Jammin's 39th birthday, Mark Briscoe will make his AEW Dynamite debut. Mark will face longtime friend and rival of the Briscoes, Jay Lethal, in a match request by both men to celebrate the life of Jay Briscoe. This is what Khan said, quote, Tomorrow, January 25th, Lexington, Kentucky, live on TBS, 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central Time, Wednesday night, AEW Dynamite, Mark Briscoe versus Jay Lethal, requested by both men to celebrate the life and legacy of the late, great Jay Briscoe on his 39th birthday. His longtime friend slash rival Jay Lethal versus his brother Mark Briscoe. Now, this has led to a lot of people discussing this change in policy by Warner Bros. Discovery. And as I mentioned, it's been a, a week since the tragic passing of Jay Briscoe in that car accident. Now, following Jay's passing, AEW were reportedly unable to host a celebration of life, a special tribute episode of Dynamite for him due to Warner Bros. Discovery not wanting the Briscoes to be featured on the show. Now, as I mentioned, it was reported yesterday by Dave Meltzer on uh, Wrestling Observer Radio, I believe it was, that uh, WBD were still unwilling to allow Mark Briscoe to appear on the show. Now that changed when Tony Khan made that announcement and Dave Meltzer provided a follow-up to his earlier report claiming that AEW had informed, uh, been informed that the policy WBD had against featuring the Briscoes had changed and he will be allowed on the show moving forward. Furthermore, Meltzer has confirmed that the company has been cleared by WBD to honour Jay Briscoe on tonight's show which falls on what would have been his 39th birthday. So is that celebration of life episode that we didn't get last week could be this week again how encompassing this whole tribute show will be tonight we'll have to wait and see of course they did film a celebration of life episode of ring of honor television that's going to air at some point soon on youtube and then on honor club and the first few episodes of ring of honor television when it does launch on honor club later this year will be heavily featuring um the the tributes to jay briscoe again we don't know when they're going to air but Meltzer tweeted quote aw is also cleared to honor jay on the show tomorrow night yep aw just confirmed wbd changed its policy on Mark Briscoe and he's allowed to appear going forward now again we don't really know we don't really know um the uh 
the the lengths in which Tony Khan went to change this policy. We don't know if Tony Khan basically said, look, ultimatum, we're going to do it anyway, whether it change your policy. Um, we don't know those details. We just don't. Um, as I mentioned, this episode tonight will take place on what would have been the 39th birthday of Mark's brother, Jay Briscoe, who passed away on January 17 following a car accident in Laurel, Delaware. Mark Briscoe, as I said, will go one-on-one -on -one with one of his brother's career rivals in Jay Lethal on tonight's show. Now, speaking to Tim Battle of the Battleground podcast, Tony Khan addressed Mark's debut match on Dynamite. He said, quote, it's going to be a great match to honor a great man. These two men requested this match. Wednesday would have been the 39th birthday of the late great Jay Briscoe. His longtime friend and rival Jay Lethal and his brother Mark Briscoe wanted to have this match to honor the legacy of Jay Briscoe. And I fought hard to make it happen. And I'm really excited about the match. I believe it's going to be a great one. And it's great that they're going to be able to honor the legacy of somebody that everybody in pro wrestling has so much respect for. The great Jay Briscoe on his 39th birthday. With every Everything happening. This is going to be something really great for everybody in the locker room who is rallying around the Briscoe family. Now, All Elite Wrestling proceeded with AEW Dynamite on January 18, the day after Jay Briscoe's passing. With the show being voluntary for all of the performers, several stars wore armbands in tribute to Jay throughout the night. When asked about the atmosphere at Dynamite last week, Khan stated, quote, Last week, to be honest, a lot of us were still in shock. We were not 24 hours off finding that Jammin had passed away. Jay Briscoe is somebody that is beloved in the wrestling business, and everybody here really liked him, and we've gotten to know him. Many of us at AEW a lot better in the last year. Year since I acquired Ring of Honor, with the Briscoes being the top tag team in the history of Ring of Honor and now the Ring of Honor Tag Team Champions. Khan continued on to address how the locker room responded to the news, saying, quote, The whole thing was a shock to everybody, and I think everybody in the locker room immediately tried to rally around Jay's family, around Mark, around everybody that's trying to bring good energy together and try and support Jay's two daughters in their recovery from what was a tragic accident. Thankfully, there has been some positive news about the recovery that Jay's two daughters are are making from the accident the whole thing has been a shock going into this show we'll see how everybody has been coping this past week but i know it's not going to be easy Tony then concluded uh, to discuss his reaction to Jay Briscoe's passing, saying, quote, I'll never forget where I was, and it's one of those things you'll never forget where you were when you hear some of these terrible things. Absolutely, I think we were all in shock. At least, uh, it's at least beautiful that everybody can come together on Wednesday Night Dynamite and honor the life and legacy of Jay Briscoe this week, because it's not only been a week since he was tragically taken away, but it's also his 39th birthday. It's a beautiful thing that his brother Mark and his longtime friend and rival Jay Lethal can go out there and go one-on-one -on -one to celebrate Jay Briscoe on AEW Dynamite. Now, speaking of Mark Briscoe, he's also released his first statement regarding... Um the situation um, and 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 how he's feeling about it. I'm sure. I mean, I don't know if he will speak tonight on Dynamite. Of course, he's going to be resting, but we don't know. Now, family friend Josh Wharton shared a, an update during a Facebook live stream. He also shared a statement from Mark Briscoe, Jay's brother and tag team partner. Uh, Josh said, "Quote: Gracie, 12, has worked with physical and occupational therapy over the last several days and continues to walk to work towards her goals. Her therapist says her strength is improving and she is able to assist with some knee bends and the." in and out with her legs. Today, she assisted with her transfer into the wheelchair using a slide board. Her pain has been much more under control. She was able to be up for a while and play some games and watch movies throughout the day. She's making huge improvements and has regained feeling below her knees, but has not moved anything below her knees. Jaylee 9, Saturday night, her NG tube was removed, and Sunday morning, she was able to eat and drink as much as she pleases. She is so much happier. Today, she worked with physical and occupational therapy and did her first stand transfer into a wheelchair. The girls were able to spend a little quality time together today after getting in uh, her bed. Her wound vac on her abdominal incision was removed she now only has to worry about her braces and external fixation on her leg she was about to work with an, uh, with an art therapist I called Mark just about half an hour ago and we talked. I told him the community cares about him and we wanted to make sure he was all right and if there was anything we could. Uh, he answered the phone, just the most ch chipper I've ever heard him. That's an upbeat family in this time of tragedy. The one thing that stuck out to me, he said, quote, I can't imagine going through this not being a believer. He realizes that our time here on earth is a small glimpse in existence. He realizes that we're going to see him again. 
And he's going to use that as a tool to motivate people to get into heaven with us. Use Jamin's untimely death as a witness, uh, almost to get people into heaven with in heaven with him. He sent a text that says, God is on the throne. Uh, that's all I got, bro. Uh, the man has been through a lot and has still and still has faith. He's going to carry on the Pew and Briscoe name proudly. I've not talked to anyone in AW, but according to the family, they've been nothing but top notch and supportive. So again, there is some some positive news, and AEW has also released a uh, memorial shirt with all of the proceeds going to the Briscoe family. So if you can go to shopaew.com and you want to buy a shirt, that's another way of supporting the family in addition to uh, donating through the various uh, GoFundMe links that have been uh, all over social media and can be found in the link to, uh, in the video description below as well. Regarding Mark Briscoe being placed on Dynamite, of course, it's fantastic news. It, it's fantastic news. Um, part of me is still really frustrated and really angry that it had to come to this. You know, someone lost their life um, and now and now the band's lifted. Um, and the reason it's frustrating too is because by all accounts, and this, and this isn't said in jest, by all accounts, Jay Briscoe really did do a lot to make amends. And Jay Briscoe really did. Again, according to people that are part of the LBGTQ plus community, had made real... Uh, strides and gone to lengths to change and to understand and to learn and to and to grow and, and that's what mistakes are about they're about growth they're about learning nobody is perfect and if they do something or say something that is regrettable if they're showing genuine remorse and they want to grow and become a better person because of it by all accounts is what jay briscoe did then they should have had the opportunity. The fact that the Briscoe brothers never got to compete on a national stage, especially when they were under contract to AEW this whole time, and they couldn't because of reportedly one executive, frankly, is bullshit. And it's just a crying shame that it had to come to this. Um, you know, it's going to be fantastic and emotional, and I'm sure really almost difficult to watch this this evening. Um but I hope Jay Briscoe gets the tribute that is fitting of him uh, on tonight's show. Uh, in addition to the one he's going to get to, uh, for the Ring of Honor show as well, because he's so, you know, so influential and uh, important to that company, that brand too. So here's hoping, again, we get a, a, a bigger tribute this week and, um, and Mark Briscoe can be a regular going forward. But it's going to take a huge amount of strength and support for him to uh, not only appear but compete on what would have been his brother's birthday just a week after his passing is, is, is going to be highly emotional without a doubt. So, of course, if we get any more details on other ways you can support the family, we'll let you know here on the channel. Now, one person that could be leaving AEW soon is Brian Cage. Now, we've spoken about Ring of Honor there. Of course, Cage is tied in with both brands at the moment. Now, according to Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful Select, Brian Cage signed with AEW in 2020 and his current deal is set to expire unless an extension is reached, according to Fightful. Cage's contract is set to expire in a matter of weeks, Fightful Select is reporting. Cage's deal was set to expire last year as well, before his option year was picked up by All Elite Wrestling. If you cast your, uh, your mind back to the time, there was uh, just a general feeling that Brian Cage would be leaving AEW because he hadn't been featured on AEW TV for a while. He had had the split up from Team Taz, and then he just didn't really do anything. And he was making some noises on social media, and the feeling was he's going to go. And then it was surprising when Tony Khan picked up his deal Deal. And by all accounts at the time, it was because Tony Khan knew he was going to purchase Ring of Honor and Brian Cage was going to be heavily influential and involved in that. Of course, I don't think Tony Khan expected Ring of Honor's TV to take this long to pick up. I think he thought he would be able to launch it quicker. That's why Brian Cage still really hasn't been seen as much. Um, now, Fightful have been told at the time that Cage was pleasantly surprised as he didn't expect to have his option picked up by AEW after not being on TV for several months, as I just said. Now, Cage currently is one half of the Ring of Honor six-man tag team champions with Korn and uh, Toa Leona. There have been feelers within WWE that have gauged the company's interest in bringing Cage in, Fightful are reporting, though they aren't sure if these there's particular interest on either side. Cage has received praise for his work since his television return in mid-2022. Of course, he's going to be facing Brian Danielson tonight on Dynamite. And, and again, this might be a situation whereby... Tony Khan really wants to keep Brian Cage, but now Brian Cage has all the power. So what do you do? You, WWE do it all the time. Put them on TV, make them feel like they're factored in or they're important, and then and then and then they'll stick around. They might sign a new deal. So I don't know what the future holds for Brian Cage. I think it could be either. Um, it's a different world right now in WWE uh, with Triple H. But at the same time, if I'm anyone signing with WWE at the moment, I've got an <laughs> I'm erring on the side of caution, knowing that Vince Man could return to creative at any point. So. 
We'll have to wait and see what happens with Brian Cage. We've got the ratings for last week's episode of AEW Rampage on TNT. And as one would expect, not great. The viewership figure and final demo rating for Friday's January 20 episode of AEW Rampage on TNT has been revealed. According to Brandon Thurston of WrestleNomics, Rampage drew 464,000 viewers. Now, this is down quite significantly from the January 13 edition that drew 513,000 viewers. This is the lowest total viewership since December 30 in the key 18 to 49 demographic. Friday show scored a 0.13 rating, which is the same as the week prior that also scored a 0.13 rating. So all of those people that tuned out were older viewers, I guess. AEW uh, Rampage ranked 16 on cable and 31, including broadcast primetime in the demo for the night. The episode featured Jungle Boy Jack Perry defeating Ethan Page and Action Andretti defeating Daniel Garcia in the main event. And it's just, again, it's as you would expect for a Rampage. That's, that's, the, that's the range at this point. In the same way that Dynamite's range is between 800,000 and let's say on, on a very, very, very good week, 1.1 million viewers, that kind of, that range. Uh, Rampage's range is about 400,000 to maybe 550. That's about it. And that's as much as it's going to get, you know. There's only so much rehab they can do on that show, I think, unfortunately. And the ratings will continue to reflect that. Uh, Sting has been a big topic of conversation. Sting, as <laughs> I can't do the Tony Schiavone impression, but Sting has dropped a huge retirement tease following his match at the Great Muta final bye-bye event. At the January 22nd show, Sting and Darby Allen teamed with the Great Muta to defeat the team of Akira and Hakushi and Omichi Marafuji. The show marked one of the final stops on Keiji Muto's retirement tour, with this bout being Muto's last as the Great Muta. In the post-match interview, Sting revealed that the bout may have also marked his an end for an era, uh, an end of an era for him as well. The wrestling veteran indicated that he might have just wrestled for the last time in Japan, noting, quote, yeah, maybe bye-bye for Sting in Japan. I don't know, we'll see. Following these comments, Muto appeared to tell Sting to return to Japan, arguing that he's still good. AEW president Tony Khan recently discussed Sting's in-ring future, confirming that the star is currently thinking about his retirement. Sting last wrestled for AEW at the November 2022 Full Gear pay-per-view, teaming with Darby Allin to defeat Jay Lethal and Jeff Jarrett. Muta, or KG Muto rather, will wrestle his final match at the KG Muto Grand Final Pro Wrestling Last Love event. It's a heck of a title on February 22nd. He's going to be facing Tetsuya Naito at that show. Uh, I would think it's very, very likely that Sting's wrestled for the final time in Japan, unless AEW decide to do anything in Japan between now and the expiration of his contract, which I don't think is going to happen. An update on AEW Dark heading back to Universal Studios. AEW is set to return to Universal Studios in Orlando, Florida for AEW Dark tapings this weekend. The AEW Twitter account has announced that All Elite Wrestling will return to Universal Studios in Orlando on Saturday, January 28th for AEW Dark tapings. Per usual, the tapings will be split into two separate sessions. The first one will run from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m., while the second one will take place from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. This will mark the first time that the company has visited Universal Studios in 2020. The last visit to the location was on December 17, 2022. Now, All Elite Wrestling has been filming episodes of Dark before AEW Dynamite tapings in front of the live crowd since their last Universal Studios visit. Of course, if we get any big stories from that, we'll let you know here on the channel. But they're going to be going back to Universal Studios this weekend. Now, Power Slap's been something incredibly controversial, not just in pro wrestling media, but just in media in general. This is a mainstream story. And a Water Bros Discovery CCO has praised All Elite Wrestling viewership and commented on the Power Slap series in a new interview. UFC president Dana White has launched his brand new venture, Power Slap, which premiered on January 18th following AEW Dynamite. Now, the premiere was delayed one week due to footage of White actually slapping his wife on New Year's Eve being released. The premiere of Power Slap drew 295,000 viewers and a 0.10 rating in the 1849 demographic. Meanwhile, the January 18th episode of Dynamite, the lead into that show, drew 969,000 viewers and a 0.31 rating in the demo, basically meaning that this idea that you can just put anything combat sports after pro wrestling and the leading will be fine no 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 that pro wrestling uh, audience that AEW dynamite audience did not like a that power slap show and they shouldn't in my opinion but i'll say that for just a second now speaking to deadline 
Warner Bros. Discovery Chairman and Chief Content Officer Kathleen Finch was asked if she had any concern about airing Power Slap following the footage of Dana White slapping his wife. She answered, quote, of course, yes, this is an experiment. The goal is we are making shows for our fans. That's who we work for. Fans of wrestling have a lot of overlap with fans of this. And it's a hu- and it's huge on social media. So the idea really is if we can take something that's huge on social, bring it to a linear audience, giving fans what they want. Revealing how much she did not know about professional wrestling prior to AEW coming into WBD. Finch said, quote, this may surprise you to know that I did not know much about wrestling before I took this job. I know I seem like a wrestling fan, but I'm not. But I did have to learn a lot about the audience. A lot of families that watch wrestling, I was very surprised to learn this. I have huge respect for this audience. AEW Wrestling airs on two of our networks, TNT and TBS, on both night. It kills. Finding something that speaks to that audience, that would be gold. So, a lot to take out of that. First of all, whenever they say, I wasn't a wrestling fan before I took this job, you go, well, that's good. That sounds very WCW, isn't it? Oh, I don't know about pro wrestling. Nobody likes that, even though it draws big ratings and big viewership for our network, and it's relatively cheap in comparison to scripted shows. Oh, yeah, no. So th- th- at least she acknowledges that it's working. That's fine. And as I've said, AEW's going to stick with WBD. They they need they need AEW. That's, that's fine. Uh, the power slap thing, I think, is ridiculous. I think in 2023, to have a show that barbaric... And I know people will say, well, they said that about UFC or MMA and they said that about... Bo-. No, no, no. What this is, is uh, if you see the clips, people get people get knocked out because they can't defend themselves. The rules specifically state you have to have your hands behind your back. You have to be holding on to something. You can't flinch. If you flinch, they have to do it again or you're disqualified. You have to just take a shot to the head. Even if you don't get knocked out, we know way too much about CTE and concussions to be doing this kind of show, why is it's ridiculous? And the outrage that we've seen from people like Christopher Nowinski and other people involved in CTE and head injuries is just completely justified. I think it's ridiculous that this show's on there. And to try and lump it in with the pro wrestling audience, oh, the pro wrestling audience loves this. No, they don't. The pro wrestling audience, more than anyone, maybe by like the NFL and stuff like that, but the pro wrestling audience, given all of the situations, that we and pro wrestling fans have gone through over the years. We know very well about CTE. Pro wrestling's got its own dark history of concussions and head injuries. They don't do chair shots to the head anymore. Certain moves they don't do anymore. There's a concussion protocol for reasons that tragedies have happened in the past due to head injuries. So the fact that they're like, oh, pro wrestling will love this audience. No, they don't. Every time there's a chair shot to the head now or something involved in the head, people cringe because we've been through that. So no, it's just, again, it's not... It needs to go. It really does. Also, an update on AEW rescheduling a show. A Winnipeg debut. Of course, they got several from Winnipeg on the AEW roster. But AEW has now confirmed that the promotion's Winnipeg Canada debut taping has been pushed back by one day. The promotion was originally set to hold Dynamite and Rampage tapings at the Canada Life Centre in Winnipeg on Tuesday, March 14. The taping has been moved to Wednesday, March 15, due to a revised network TV broadcast schedule. AEW shared the following uh, statement on the change, saying, quote, due to a revised network TV broadcast schedule, the doubleheader AEW AW Dynamite and AW Rampage shows originally scheduled for March 14 at Canada Life Centre in Winnipeg have been rescheduled for Wednesday, March 15. This aligns with the regularly scheduled live broadcast of AEW Dynamite on Wednesdays at 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Fans who have already purchased tickets will have their original tickets valid for admission to the event on March 15. Fans who cannot attend on the rescheduled date or wish to seek a refund have until Sunday, February 5th to request a refund from Ticketmaster or the original point of purchase. After February 5th, all sales are final. AEW and Canada Life appreciate your support. Of course, as I mentioned, they're making their debut, which again features the likes of Chris Jericho and Kenny Omega and Don Callis. All from Winnipeg, so it'll be certainly a big taping there. Finally, Kansas have commented on the Elite using their song for their entrance. Of course, Wayward Son has been a staple since the Elite returned to television. And Kansas uh, vocalist and keyboardist Ronnie Platt has now reacted to Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks using their Carry On Wayward Son for their AEW entrance. The Elite have been using their song since their trio's entrance theme as their trio's entrance theme since their in-ring return at the November 2022 Full Gear pay-per-view. Speaking on Paltrowcast, Platt noted that he believes the Elite using their song is great for the band 
fan notes and quotes. That's the original that they're using. I saw that video where they were walking out in the stadium and all the people are going nuts. Oh my God, that was so cool. That's just good for the band. That's good promo and really introducing Kansas, even though the kids might not know who the band is or haven't heard the song before. It is really, it really is initiating young people to that music. So it's all good. We call that job security. So Kansas approve and I approve. I love that entrance. But there you go, guys. It's the latest AW news for you. Be sure to smash a like on the like button. Be sure to subscribe bottom right hand corner. Plenty of content on the horizon. And I'll speak to you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.